we're going to be planting some stuff. It's uh, about the third week of July, second, third week of July. We plant some stuff for the fall garden and for our fall plant sale. So we're going to let Debbie show you what we're planting and how we're planting it. My turn? Your turn. Okay. I'm starting them now. Today is the 18th of July. Uh, we're doing a plant sale at the end of September. A lot of people like start to start planting their fall plants about September, October. So I'm going to have them ready for then. It's awful hot to be thinking about all this, but we're going to be planting some broccoli and cauliflower, Brussels sprouts. I've got some bok choy, uh, different things, and um, we're going to be getting those started. And the best way for me to do it and explain it to you is I just start the seedlings, and then I get a little, little pricker thing and prick them out and put them in the pots then. That way I don't waste my pots and have like two or three in a six pack or anything like that and that seems to work pretty good so let's get started oh and I'm also going to plant this I got this from Baker Creek it's a little ornamental tomato and I want to try them to see if people could grow them through the winter uh, have a little tomato pot in your house a little miniature tomato and you could have cherry tomatoes occasionally for your salads Okay, first let me explain the way to figure when to start your fall plants is you want to look when your average first frost date, and we're in zone 8B, uh, our average first frost is about November 15th. You're going to take that date and you're going to count back about 10 weeks or so. That way you can get your plants started and then have them in the ground and get them established before the frost hits. But now most of these will grow through the winter here, especially. Um, we have rather mild winters, unless it's like it was last year when it hit eight below. But we still had stuff survive. They just didn't do right. They kind of went weird on us. I had some cabbages that were doing good, and then when it warmed up, they just bolted and went to seed. You want to know what that date is, and you can back it up and start your stuff. We're starting just a little bit early because we want to have stuff ready for the plant sale. Um, figure that because you figure from the start of planting the seeds you've got about six to eight weeks before they're ready to plant and so that's kind of the date that I went by and then I went a little extra just to give them time to do some more growing so let's go ahead and get started first off I've got a soilless seed mixture and it's important that you do get a soilless seed mixture, which this is uh, Fox Farms Cocoa Bop, which it's cocoa core, worm castings, uh, perlite, and some compost. But the reason that you don't want soil in it because is because it'll have a soil-borne disease that the, they can get called damping off when you take all your precious little seedlings and you take them out and harden them off. And they're out there pretty and everything, and then all of a sudden they wilt and die. And you don't want that, so that's why we use a soilless seed mixture, then they can't have that. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. And I'm going to fill these little pots here, what I'm going to be using to start them in. And I just put it in about two-thirds full. About like that. And this is damp, it's just looking dry on top because I dam uh, dampened it the other day. And let's start, I've got some snowball cauliflower. And I just kind of eyeball it and just get a pinch or so. But I like the snowball cauliflower because it's um, what they call self-blanching. Because uh, some of the other cauliflowers that you get, um, you have to kind of fold the leaves up and cover them. Because if the sun gets on the cauliflower head, then it'll just kind of make it black and ugly and not attractive which the snowball cauliflower is self-blanching, the leaves will fold up on themselves. Then when I get that done, I just take just a pinch of little dirt right here like this. After I get my seedlings in there and get them started, it is very important that you label your plants because a lot of these are going to look alike and you're not going to remember what's what. So I've got these nifty little four inch plant labels that I use and I just write on them. This is a permanent garden marker. Uh, we found that these work the best because the Sharpies will work good on there but then they fade in the sun and these don't fade. So I just write on there what it is. 
And I only grow one kind of cauliflower, so I don't have to specify on this. I will when I start them out on the seedlings to sell. And so we've got our cauliflower done. And then let me show you, I'll do the cabbage, and I've got two kinds of cabbage I'm going to be starting. In case you didn't notice, I'm using my nifty little wheelbarrow Eddie got me. I like it. And I have Copenhagen cabbage that I'm going to be growing. I'm going to start a few. And on this one, I'm going to write the Copenhagen cabbage because I've got another kind that I'm going to be planting. And I'll just stick that right in there like that. And put that there. Okay, so let's go ahead and start our uh, other cabbage. It is a early round Dutch. on planting your seeds is you want them about three times the depth of the size of the seed which I don't know if you can see but these are pretty tiny seeds so it doesn't take a whole lot of dirt to cover these up these are pretty small and that little bitty seed will make a cabbage and add it to a pile and I've got one more cabbage that I want to start and that's just because I like it but it's the red cabbage I like to grow the red cabbage uh, your red vegetables and your darker vegetables are fuller of uh, full of antioxidants and they're just really good for your health and so let's get that one started mostly I grow that one for us but I do sell some. Let's go ahead and water these in. I've got my nifty little wand here and I've got it set on the mist setting because you don't want it too heavy. You just want to kind of dampen the top and you got to keep it dampened until they come up. And if you don't have this, you can use a sprinkle can. The watering cans just go real slow and let it do it like that. But you just want to water these in good and let them do their thing. Uh, when these come up, which should be anywhere from a week to two weeks, then when they get up and get their first set of true leaves, then I will come back and transplant them in six packs or singles. Most people I've discovered like to buy just the single plants because they do the little container gardening and all that. Uh, so, 
anyway I'm going to show you how to plant it in six packs if you don't want to do it on the scale that I do and I've got some little six pack containers here and let's see if we can show you yeah, with a little six cell you can do the singles you could use Dixie cups you could use the single pots like I got right here um, a lot of people when they buy seedlings they will save the pots and that's a good idea just kind of wash them up make sure they're clean so they don't harbor any diseases or just set them out in the sun for a couple of weeks and that'll help kill a lot of it too um, but we're going to do this and the best way to do this that I know to tell you let's go ahead and do some uh, let's do some Brussels sprouts here and I'll just use the end of my pen I just make a little divot just like that and then I'll take and put just like a couple of seeds in each one and these seeds are so tiny you're not going to be able to see me putting these in here but come back and you just cover them up just like that just real gentle you don't want to pack it down in there too much but you do want to firm it a little bit because you want that uh, soil to seed contact and that will help your seeds germinate better And let's do one more. Let's go ahead and do some red cabbage. Let me make my label for this first before I do anything else so I don't forget what I got where. And that one's done. And we got this one from Emma Gardner. Emma Gardner is another real good one, and they only sell heirlooms just like uh, Baker Creek does. So I like to get stuff from them. And doing it like this with me putting two seeds in each one, um, I do that just to try and make sure that I have something in every cell but if you have two that come up in each one if you want to you could always just kind of prick it out and um, put it in another place put it in another little pot my label. So I'm just going to plant the two for now. I'll leave the other four empty. Uh, what I can do it, with those is when my seedlings come up, I can plant them in there. Or if I have two come up in each of these, I can transplant them over in there and label them and all. So I will just leave these like this for now. Now I do have a greenhouse. In fact, I have two of them. Um, and I do grow my stuff in there. But my fall stuff, it's so hot in the greenhouse right now that I just put them out here on my hardening off tables and just leave them outside and let them start out here kind of in the shade um, and just let them grow that way and when you do that you don't have to do all the hardening off and everything you can just plant them when they're ready but now in the spring um, if you don't have a greenhouse and you want to start your seedlings inside you can do several different things 
you can put them in a sunny window, but the problem with doing that is you're going to have to turn them every day because they're going to grow towards that window and they may get just a little leggy. Uh, when you uh, do that, you know, they'll grow and especially with tomatoes, I like leggy tomatoes because you plant 70% of the tomato plant and if they're leggy then that gives you that much more of a root system because all those little hairs on them tomato plants will make roots and that way you'll have a stronger root system. But now with some of your other stuff, you really don't want it leggy. Uh, so another idea would be to get you a grow light. You can get a grow light and put it maybe on a counter and have the grow light hanging above it to where um, it can shine on it and get them growing. The thing with the grow light that you want to remember is you always want to keep it only six inches above the height of either the seed starting mix or with the um, plants as they grow, you want to just keep it six inches ahead. You really don't have to have a light to start your seedlings. You could put them in a dark room, it doesn't matter, but the best way to keep them growing is with the grow light. You could even set up like some shelves and put grow lights on them, or you could put even, I started my very first one was with shop lights, and I did it in the back bedroom, and I had them hanging by chains, and I had them on a timer, because your seedlings will need at least 12 hours of sunlight to grow. Um, and that's the best way to handle that if you want to go inside. Um, they have little inexpensive greenhouses you could get. I've never tried one, but I've had, I've talked to people that have, and they're, okay. they're, they, they're happy with them. They're not a permanent fix, not a permanent structure. Um, you know, you may get a couple seasons out of them. But the best way to start it, in my opinion, when you're doing it on a small scale just for you, is in your house or in your garage, somewhere that you can keep it warm, um, especially in the spring. And my stuff, a lot of it, I start about January. And it's still cold here in January, so I have to have heat for it. And the sun sometimes isn't a little you know, it doesn't cooperate and we don't have quite enough sun, so I'm looking into getting some lights for my greenhouse. But that's your options. There's a lot of different things that you can do, and it's very rewarding to start your own seedlings and not have to count on them because as you see here, I'm, I'm planting stuff that is, that they're heirlooms. They are not real popular, but they're different, and I like the diversity of it, so I can grow stuff that not everyone else does. And that's the reason I like to go this way, and that's the reason I started doing it in my house years and years ago. I had not bought seedlings in years when I started my greenhouse about four or five years ago, and I had to go and look at the big box stores and all to see what they sold for because I had no idea. You know, when I when I bought them, I paid like a dollar and a half for a six pack. Well, now they're up to about five or six dollars for a six pack, which makes sense because everything else has went up. But I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope that this gave you some ideas. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and we'll try and answer them as quickly as we can. And good luck.